got some RC mail from GetFPV. Okay. The Hermit from GetFPV, which is a little micro flyer. Runs brushless motors on two cell. Sorry, in the box, got another box and some spare props that I got. Hermit Micro FPV Brushless, ready to fly. So this one does not include a camera or a video transmitter. We'll be putting my own on here. To us, LiPo 450 Ma 25C. Just has a balance plug on the end. I'll weigh that out. I've got some uh, some other 450 Ma batteries, some Glacier ones. Compare the weight. More props. Two sets. These props are kind of cool because they have this little, uh, what do you call this thing? A little cone that sits on top of there. Wow. This thing is cool looking. So I'm happy to see this in the package, which is for the camera mount, so you can adjust the angle. And then there's a larger uh, clear piece here. Not sure what that's for. Maybe that is uh, to mount a video transmitter. <coughs> or maybe that's all part of the camera mount. Anyways, it is completely assembled. And these motors are tiny. This thing is very interesting. So, some of the people that got theirs were complaining that the screws were loose right out of the box. Let's see. <clears throat> These are Phillips head screws on here. That one is tight. 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 Okay, this one's definitely about to fall out. Alright, I'm not going to tighten them all up because I'm going to be taking this apart next. But, yep, for sure. Uh, some of them were like just a few threads on there. So definitely get one, go through it, make sure it's tight. I don't see any, just a couple that were really, really just barely threaded on there. That's kind of weird. The rest of them may or may not be loose. I'll go through them all. carbon fiber it all looks very neat neat and tidy the flight controller is all the way in the back <coughs> and it does not look quite level once I get it apart I'll see how secure it feels to me because you don't want the flight controller moving around my finger, yeah, it's not going anywhere. It just doesn't look quite level. So the plan is I'm going to be adding this video transmitter 
which will be running on 5 volts and on 1.3 gigahertz at 1258 megahertz and this camera which I've used these before and it's pretty pretty impressive at least to me and it's supposed to have clean flight preloaded on there we'll take a look at it in a minute it's I've removed the screws from the top plate oh on the side these are the batteries I purchased to use with this and so this uh, lollipop does come in uh, a bit heavier I think it was around five grams heavier or so um, than the stock battery but so you can see it has these much longer wires and uh, they come with these um, balance port uh, protectors which are kind of neat but they, they themselves this is like about a gram and a half and um, the model the battery it comes with just comes with uh, a balance port connector and uh, it has a pretty ingenious uh, little adapter so that you can plug it in and so you could still charge it off of a, a JST and still do a balance charge and that ends up actually saving quite a bit of weight because um, these wires are uh, really long and um, I had to make a couple other um, adapters kind of like that came with it because uh, otherwise uh, I'm stuck with just charging one battery at a time if I go ahead and remove this lead. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, it's still going to end up, well, once I put in my FPV, FPV gear, it'll still end up weighing less than the, the factory one with the camera and built in VTX. So I'll go ahead and I just, I left the. Uh, uh, this battery uh, mm, input still on there and then we just flip it back I'm just gonna leave that as is and it's pretty amazing this flight control board okay so here is this little button I believe this is to uh, bind it to the receiver if I'm, yeah. So if you can see the board here um, is not quite level. So it does move up and down a little bit, but not back and forth. And that's easily remedied. Either hot glue or backing tape. Because it's mounted on top of a plate, this clear plastic plate. It has two screws holding it here, and then there's uh, two screw holes, but nothing holding it down. And that's why it's moving around a little bit. So I'm not going to put screws through there, but I'll either hot glue it or use a, probably use a little double-sided tape right on the bottom of there, and then it will sit more firmly. All right. See where I can get five volts off the board and be right back. Okay, so I know this board has five volts out of it, it has a regulator built into it somewhere. Uh, I'm not quite sure where that's at. I did check coming out of the serial port for the radio, it is does have 3.3 volts coming out. Um, so I was thinking about going in there and stuffing the voltage up to 5 volts. But I might, you know, I don't know. If I don't use the integrated uh, Spectrum DSM-2 receiver, I might <clears throat> want to use a PPM receiver in there. So I didn't want to go and step up the volts. So instead, what I did is I went in through one of the motor ports here and that's uh, just coming voltage straight out of the battery and then stepped it down using this uh, regulator that's adjustable until I had it uh, coming out 5 volts so this is this cord actually comes with the camera VTX combo that I had from ready-made but it's been modified a little bit 
that's where that's from. So I'll finish it up, uh, tuck everything up, put in the video transmitter, which is this little guy, and the camera. Here's what I ended up with initially. I'm using the integrated DSM-2 receiver here. Uh, that right there is the little bind button. Um, so I wanted to add this uh, transmitter, which is, operates on 5 volts, and a 5 volt camera, which just happens to be off screen here at the moment. Um, I wasn't sure where to find 5 volts on this board. So I ended up uh, stepping down the power for coming from the motor port, which is straight from uh, the two cell battery connection, which is right there, and stepping that down to 5 volts uh, by tuning the regulator down to 5 volts, and wind the power to the camera and the video transmitter. Here it's completed, but had some issues with range using the DSM-2. So this is what I ended up with. Uh, I added the uh, DR4-2 receiver um, to work with my Tyrannus radio directly without needing to go to a module and much better range uh, with uh, RSSI feedback. So the pins are all removed, the cover. Uh, this ends up coming in at 4 grams, including um, this uh, section of wire and that little uh, micro JST connector. The original receiver set uh, on top here, and that uh, I removed it, uh, that uh, comes in at 0.7 grams. The um, model uh, all up weight uh, with the LiPo comes in at 93.6 grams, which uh, still is under the weight of the ready to fly uh, FPV version uh, that Oversky produces. Um, but I don't have the uh, DV recording, uh, recording off of a DVR, uh, but I don't have the lag and uh, a, pr a much better picture in my opinion here. A couple things to note, uh, I kept the wiring uh, fairly short some of these wires from the rear ESCs, uh, they're a little longer, and it's easy to uh, pinch that in here. So make sure everything's tucked away. Uh, you see both, both of those just kind of hung on the outside. It'd be easy to uh, pinch those tiny wires, so be careful with that. When uh, I went to, uh, I'll show you how to set this board up for the jumpers, but when you, uh, if, when you're removing these uh, motor connectors here, or the ESC connectors from those three pin ports, they're very tight on there. Uh, so don't use like a needle nose pliers or something. Use a, a plastic pry tool the best, or uh, just work it with your fingernails pushing out from the side. Another thing to note is uh, the Free Sky uh, receiver, in order for it to be uh, sending PPM, uh, you have to have a jumper in place on channels three and four. So the way I did that, since I removed all the pins, is uh, on the other side of this, I have this uh, solder together. It's pretty hard to get the solder to stay. You can't just kind of blob it on there. So I used a small section. Uh, I just clipped a tiny piece of... Uh, from the pins, the copper pins, and soldered that in place. So in order to get the board to uh, use a PPM input, uh, you're going to have to go to these pads. So from the factory, these two pads are bridged. Uh, and there's three pads here, one, two, three. So these two are bridged, and this is telling the board that it's getting uh, a DSM-2 signal. In order to get PPM, you're going to have to bridge these two and remove this solder bridge. 
I did that using a solder pump, just pulled the solder out of there. You can probably just use a hot iron and push it over. Just make sure that these two aren't connected any longer at all. You can use a continuity, continuity checker and just make sure these two are soldered together. These pads on the, are on the flight controller uh, opposite the USB side. So this is that three pin connector. It's the only three pin connector on the side. All of the other connectors are on the ends. Uh, and it's directly opposite the USB port. Apologize for the out of focus picture, but now uh, this is soldered correctly for PPM. Okay, I had emailed Oversky uh, before I had uh, set this jumper up asking them how to do this. Uh, I received an email back from them actually after I had already done this. And I just wanted to show you uh, what Oversky was saying. This is the email they sent me. Um, it's a little confusing because, you know, the two pictures are the same. The picture on the left is my, my photo after I have PPM set up, moving, uh, jumpering the two pads on the left. This is the pictures they sent me. Um, anyways, it's all very confusing to me. They, they also say to change this jumper so that at 3.3 volts is changed to voltage in. Now, I'm powering the receiver from this. So this is, I did not change this at all. Um, and the FreeSky DR42 receiver shows us it's spec from, uh, I believe, 3.5 volts to 10 volts. But um, I'm having no issues uh, with the receiver getting power from the board. Uh, and I, I think I metered it at 3.3. Maybe it was a little more than 3.3, but regardless, it's it's working just fine. The only thing I changed is this, but this is uh, what Oversky sent uh, to me in response to my question as to how to, what, what pads do I need to jumper to uh, have PPM in. And so I thought I'd share this with you guys. This is the test flight after I put in the DR42 receiver. I would lose uh, RC link right around there at the corner of the house with the DSM2 built-in receiver from controlling from inside the house and getting through the walls of the house. It just wasn't happening. Um, these are the stock PID settings or the recommended settings that they have on the GetFBV and OverSky website. Uh, the only thing I changed a little bit, the rates but I still haven't gone into tuning too much, but it flies decent. I did find that the throttle needs uh, about 65% or so to hover, which I didn't like. So I they made a throttle curve so that I'm at mid stick throttle and have a little bit of a flat spot in there. And if you're interested, I've got that at the end of the video. That's the ground station that's relaying to 5.8 to the inside the house. Uh, also at the end of the video, I'm gonna put some NACE32, the base flight uh, configuration settings that I have on this.